Hello beloved brethren, um, this video is a little recap about everything um, to edify the church of God and to comfort um, the saints. Um, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path, Psalm 119.105. Um, if you look in the very beginning of Genesis, because we're going to go over quite a few things and I hope that um, this does edify many people in the body of Christ. Um, in Genesis, you see that the Spirit of God was from the beginning, and in the beginning, it talks about God creating the heavens. This is the beginning. So he creates the heaven and the earth, but he already was before the beginning. So that's a very big clue that he's everlasting, the everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and his Spirit moved over upon the face of the waters. So then he started creating things and he created Adam and Eve. If you're born of a woman, um, this is important for you because God made man in his image. And so man is, um, God is the, um, the head of man and man is the head of woman. But in man, since God created, so he said, let us make um, because he created man and he even called him his son, you know, but he was a created creature. Jesus is begotten of the father. He's the seed from the father. Very different. And that word, he is the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us. So he's the word of God. Sorry for the noise in the background today is, um, trash day. Um, so you see that God created things, living things. Uh, he became a living soul. So that's what Adam became. And um, he gave him dominion over everything, the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man. So he created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him male and female. So in the, in the, in the um, mankind, you have both male and female. It doesn't mean that we're transgender. That is a that's a misunderstanding of the scriptures. It says that he he made that he created them. That's plural. So just like you have a family tree, there's many in your family tree. Um, you're of one tree, right? It's the same thing. Um, Adam is one tree, male and female, that God created, created. And he made him in the image of God. And so when you look at a man, if they are a man, born of a woman, um, then they are in, made in the image and likeness of, of God. Now, they may not be behaving in the image and likeness of God because of what happened in Genesis 3. And that's in Genesis 1. God had told Adam, you know, you can eat of all the fruit of the trees. But in um, one tree, he said that you can't eat. Uh, let's see. So... He's given us herbs um, from the trees and uh, every seed. Um, but he's, he's talking to him. And then in, ver in chapter 2, he says, um, you know, and out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is ple pleasant to the sight and good for food. So the trees are all pleasant to sight and good for food, right? And the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there is a watering of the garden that God had made. Um, that all, everything that God had made, he's watering. Um, a river went out of Eden to water the garden. So you have Eden is a place. Um, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. And then you have all the, the different parts. But where God said, you know, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And so we see in Genesis 3, the serpent was more subtle than any beast beast of the field. So the serpent was a beast in the field, which is um, like the earth, um, which the Lord God had made. So God made the serpent right here. The Lord God had made the serpent also because he was one of the creeping things here, creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 
that Adam, man, had dominion over, okay, and dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl and over the fowl of the air. That's very important part because we'll see that in Gen in Revelation, you'll see that that um, that she becomes a the woman in Revelation seventeen becomes a habitation of devils in a cage of every foul spirit and hateful bird. So you have fowl of the air and then you have birds of the air that God created also. So God created it all. And so you see that in the scriptures, she is beguiled by the serpent and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of this. So she's saying we can eat of all the trees, but trees, but this one we can't. And so then the serpent beguiles or deceives the woman. So she, he also does something very evil. So God's word spoke to Adam and he said, you know, don't, you can eat of all the trees, but you can't eat of this one tree. That's God's word speaking. So the, the word of God, God, the Lord God is speaking to Adam and saying the word and he's to obey the word but he doesn't obey the word that God the Lord God speaks um, when the woman is deceived and she gives to him to eat the fruit also so fruit can be the fruit of your words um, your words can be spoken um, be fruit it says in the scriptures it talks about how the words the tongue is fruit like in Proverbs eighteen twenty one, Luke six forty five. You see Proverbs fifteen. You see a tree of life. The word that the the mouth can be a tree of life, or it can be um, set on fire. The the world James three six a world of iniquity. It can be. Um, it can set set on set on fire by hell itself. So the fruit of this tree, God was saying, don't eat of that fruit because you will surely die. He didn't say you might die. He said you will surely die. And so then here comes the serpent that twisted the word of God and twisted the word of God in a way that she would be deceived. And she, and he even said, you shall be as gods. So he twisted the word and said that you'll be as gods. You'll know good and evil. You'll, you'll be able to be as a god. And in the research that I've done with the scriptures and the spirit of the Lord guiding me, you can see that this whole Babylonian system. So from this, we're going to go to the book of Revelation. You can see that God's book is really good. This is such a great book. Um, you see that God talks about your words, the fruit of your words and what you speak and how um, it can be it can be tree of life or it can be death. And in Revelation 12, you see, and I've done videos somewhat about this, you see the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Okay, so a flood, words, it came out of his mouth. So you, you have water in your body, right? And um, you speak words. Um, and we know that the word of God, when he speaks and gives us commandments, when we obey those commandments, the way that Eve should have obeyed the commandment of, of the word of God, the word of the Lord God um, that said, don't eat of that tree, the fruit of that tree, um, and unless you will surely die. You see that here um, he's sending out a flood. And it's to, to destroy the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So what happened in the beginning is happening in the book of Revelation in the end. So, and the dragon, you know, so you see, why does he do that? Well, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, read the whole thing. I, I like it when people read the whole, all of it. So when you're in Genesis, whatever I'm showing you, please go back and read it all because you need to have context and everything. And uh, the Lord shows me things, but I can't read all the scriptures to you. Um, this is for the edification of the church. And so read the whole thing. But I'm going to show you right here in chapter 7 that there was war. In, I mean, verse 7 of chapter 12, revelation of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Um, there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels, I'm going to read it to you in verse 7, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. That's what heaven is, according to the scriptures. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Now, this is the serpent, so if people don't want to talk about the serpent, I'm sorry, but serpent is written from the Genesis all the way to Revelation, and you can see even in the Psalms of David, he talks about the serpent. Okay, so which is a dragon is the serpent. Okay, the great dragon is the serpent. <laughs> just so you know. And he has children, and they are serpents. They are serpents in the dragon. Okay, so you see that they deceived the whole world in verse 9, um, which deceived the whole world. Now, Michael is the archangel and his angels are warrior angel angels, and they do the will of God. And so in heaven, um, they were ca no place. There was no place found for them anymore in heaven because what is heaven? Heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. If someone is deceiving you, is there peace there? I ask you. If someone's beguiling you or doing sorcery on you, is there peace? Well, according to Genesis, all of Eve's children died. Was there peace in that beguiling? No, there was no peace from the serpent. So that's why the serpent was cast out of heaven because they were beguiling, deceiving Eve, doing sorcery, witchcraft. And in fact, she even did some sorcery too, which we don't need to get into that because she twisted God's word herself also. So the two of them were at fault. You could see it. And that's why, you know, they should have gone to God. She should have gone to God and said, you know, I did this thing and I'm sorry. I repent for it, you know, um, but she didn't. Um, I'm returning to you. Heal me. Clean me. Clean me up of this unrighteousness. Um, and God, God is faithful to forgive those who repent. Um, he was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, so where are they now? They're cast into the earth. In the earth. This is something that um, it's very important that saints understand that the, the wolves, wolves in sheep's clothing and the tares amongst the wheat, which I believe are these serpents, um, have come in to kill still and destroy um, the word of God and twist the word of God so that you look at the word of God a certain way. And the reason why was because they wanted to have control of the word so you would not see who they were. Why? Because they were ruling on the earth. And we've looked at pictures of the prince ruling on the earth, who I believe was a serpent. Um, and I believe because the serpent's children, according to the scriptures, are sown by the wicked one. And this is the one we're talking about. And they, they spew out words. But these words are from hell. It says that some words can be, um, can be a world of iniquity set on fire of hell in James 3. We see in Proverbs, it talks about the, the fruit of the tongue. So it was that tree that, that Eve was eating off of, the fruit. They said that she would be like a god. And what, what was that prince and the queen of England like? They're like gods. They're ruling over people. They're getting praise of people. They're getting um, idolized, idolatry. Instead of worshiping the Lord in heaven, they're worshiping. And, the, and people that worship these other people... Because it says in the scriptures, cursed is man that follows man. Okay, we have to follow God and anyone that's following God. So why did they take over the word of God? Well, they know the scriptures. <laughs> the serpent knows the scriptures. They carry a Bible and they are very good at twisting it, obviously, um, and deceiving, as it says in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. So you see that the dragon was cast to the earth, deceived deceived this is revelation chapter 12 and now and then it says in um verse 10 now is is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our god day and night and how did they accuse him they condemned our people to death 
Um, they came in and killed the native Indians, destroyed the land, and, and, and stole the land, and then destroyed it. And you can hear some of the destruction in the background, you know, all that metal and gold and copper and all those things are dug out of holes and they dig underground tunnels. Well, what do serpents do? They dig holes, you know, <laughs> it could destroy the earth. Now, um, God is in control of all of these things and he is the one that can allow them to do whatever they're going to do. Because Jesus said, you don't have any power over me unless it's given unto, from my father. So anything that in Job, you see that. Um, Satan asked God to curse Job. So who puts a curse on Job? The accuser of the brethren. So he tried to accuse Job be before God and say, oh, well, Job, the reason that he doesn't uh, do anything, um, you know, curse you is because he's had a good life. And so let me do something to him. And that's where you get the destruction. Okay, the destroyer, the Apollyon, the Apollo the destroyer of the flesh. So the apostles, whenever someone, Ananias and Sapphira, had denied the Holy Spirit and kept back some of the land, uh, the money from the land and some of their land, it could, it could also mean your heart. You keep back some of your heart from God. You haven't returned fully with your whole heart. Um, they, they handed them over because they denied the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was working. And they said, you know, um, hand them over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh. That their spirit may be saved. Actually, I might be mixing up that one with another part. Well, we know that Ananias and Sapphira died instantly. And so who who does that? The accuser of the brethren, the one that um, accuses them to death. Now, is it that the saints, the apostles were accusing them? No, they said that their spirit may be saved. So they were not accusing them, condemning them to death for eternity. No, they were not doing that. The, the, um, the ones that condemned Jesus to death and blasphemed him, the spirit, and said that he was from Beelzebub, uh, and the son of perdition, Judas Iscariot, spied out Jesus and then handed him over to be killed. So he was an accuser of Jesus to hand him over to be killed. So there can be those accusers accused day and night, and that's what the serpent, the devil, and it's called the devil and Satan does. And so it goes on and says, um, and he accuses day and night. So 24 seven, we're getting accused. And even we know because we can hear, you know, those accusations being spoken in our ear sometimes or in our mind, we can hear them say things to us and trying to accuse us, you know, making us feel bad about something um, or saying you did this or you did that. So they're, they're sitting and watching. In the Psalms it says that there's a table prepared be, in front of us before our enemies. And our enemies are accusing us. So it says, and they overcame him. So this is one. Okay, this part I've got to um, explain. So the dragon, the devil, the serpent. Okay, the serpent is has a tree... <laughs> I, is like a tree also you know you've heard the old old scriptures where it's, or when people would say um, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and that tree will be uprooted so you see there's a true a tree that's uprooted um, and this tree is has many in one so it says and, uh, and and his angels so and his angels what is an angel an angel is a messenger you can entertain angels unaware you could be entertaining one of these angels unaware not even knowing that they are an angel from the dragon um, and they can appear as people and even the scriptures say that um, uh, no wonder for satan appears as an angel of light so here is satan this is satan so the dragon, which is also called Satan, right? The serpent, the devil, and Satan right here in verse 9. The devil and Satan. So you see in these scriptures, there's not just one. There's his messengers too. Similarly, you have God. And, and they speak from, this is the angel of the bottomless pit that comes up. 
right, at the end and makes war with God's people. They had made war in heaven. Michael and his angels cast them out to earth. They're here. They're making war with God's woman. We're going to get into that a little bit. And um, they're not. They, there's no place found in, in heaven for them because they um, accused God's children day and night. And there's a time thing that we're not going to get into today. But I wanted to talk about that that tree, the fruit of their lips, are like burning people up or drowning them to kill them the word of God is a lamp okay the word of God gives light to the believer gives us understanding um, scriptures are Jesus gives us the understanding of the word of God he is the word of God he is life God said that life is in my son and Jesus was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us so his fire will thoroughly purge his floor of all deceivers liars sorcerers uncleanness, all of those things that, that are not holy and righteous because heaven again is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So anyone that's in the Holy Ghost. But the, these fallen ones appear as angels of light, okay? They have been cast out and they come to you as a Christian because the dragon, it says in another part of the book of Revelation, it says that the dragon it speaks like a lamb, or looks like a lamb, but speaks as a dragon. So they look like a lamb. They claim to be Christian. They come to you as an angel of light, but their words are burning up or flooding you and destroying life. Opposite of the word of God given by the spirit of God. So you see here, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. This is These are the people that were accused. So it says, for the accuser of, the, of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now, when is this happening? Is something that you're going to have to explore with the Holy Spirit. I am not given to give this truth that I, I understand myself right now. But understand that time is not the way you think. <laughs> and things are not... That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things that the Lord has given. And, and it's not for me to keep, but... He's not ready to give that information right now in this video. This video is specifically for uh, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And they, the enmity between the two that God had prophesied would happen from Genesis. That there would be enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And, um, and the fact that Adam had rule over all creatures. Okay, Adam is the ruler over all creatures. Now, when Eve decided to, to believe the serpent over the word of God, uh, what happened? Um, that, that was when they were taking the word of God and putting them as their head. Rather than, I mean, not the word of God, uh, the serpent, the words of the serpent that he spoke, the smooth, subtle, beguiling words that the serpent spoke. They accepted those words rather than the word of God. And so the serpent stumbled Eve and Adam. They cast stumbling stones before them to hurt them and to usurp the authority of Adam. And so you see in this scripture here, and that's why, uh, and, and also the fact that the serpent was created also, um, and, it, and that it was a beast, okay, in the field. That's what God said. The serpent was more subtle than all the beasts in the field. So there's many beasts. We have wolves that are beasts, and we have many kinds of beasts in the field. Um, so Adam and Eve, so they had been, um, you know, they had been defiled or um, corrupted by the serpent. One thing that, that was a corruption was they thought they could become as gods. But the fact is, is they already had God with them. So they were already as gods. Um, but the fact is, is they wanted to be, you know, I think it was the same as the cherub who wanted to be like God or wanted to be God. And, and that's the way it seems to be in the scriptures that they wanted to be God. And we see many of these serpents in our world who claim to be Christian. So they're posing as an angel of light. Okay. Because we have Christ in us, the word of God, which is the lamp or the light. So they're posing as an angel of light 
and they may even have what looks like light in them because the angel um, was the light bearer that fell that um, Michael cast out that old dragon called the serpent and the devil which was a cherubim which was a covering cherub or the light bearer so these serpent people or these serpents or the angels that left their first estate they will be, look like light because what are angels they're they're light they had the word of god they knew the word of god um and so that's where you see that they may uh, appear as um a angel of light of knowledge of understanding um but it's very clear that they are uh spirits not mankind even though man had become a living soul and had a spirit in them these were angels are different uh, than mankind very different and so you have two different kinds of trees right if you want to talk about people as trees because jesus said i saw you walk as trees or no that's not what he said he said um he said how did he say it he saw them from above right so i don't want to mess that part up because that's not true it, it he had opened their eyes so that they they knew that they were as men okay so um but we can talk of the tree of life uh that you know god says life is in my son you know it's the fruit that you that you bear um and he talks about him being a vine and his arm and his people are like branches, but he is the righteous branch, right? And that he is also the husbandman, which prunes and cuts and, and tends to the garden. Okay. So you see that there is an accuser and there is the dragon. Um, it says we overcome by the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Jesus. And by the word of their testimony, and they, they love not their lives unto the death, because to live is Christ, to die is gain, right? It's a gain to, to, to die. It's not something that we fear because we have hope. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Okay, so this is a very important part. So the heavens are rejoicing because the devil and his angels were cast out because they were deceiving the whole place. And but the earth, the people, and the sea. So the sea, the earth, and the sea of the sea, inhabitants. So people who are inhabitants of earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. What happened to Adam and Eve? They were put outside the paradise of God after they had eaten of that tree, and they God preserved them in skin coats. There was a sacrifice. Um, they had skin coats put over them. And that's the second tabernacle. So that Adam and Eve are the first tabernacle. Adam being, um, so Eve being part of the lineage or part of mankind. So even though it's them, he made them, it says. So he made Eve out of Adam, out of his rib while he was asleep. In the same way, while we were asleep, uh, Christ, the head of the church, the, the church being like a woman, okay, G Jesus Christ, the last Adam, okay, this is a new creature. So in the first Adam, that's the first tabernacle, the skin coats put over Adam, second tabernacle, that was a temporary tent dwelling place. The third um, uh, temple or tabernacle or house of God is Jesus Christ, the Lord in heaven. And we are his body here as ambassadors for Christ, but our citizenship is in heaven. We are here as ambassadors, and that's why we have trials and tribulations because it's outside um, the uh, the it's outside. God judges outside. He does all the work outside of the holiest of holies through us. Okay, so for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. 
Now we're seeing the serpent now, brothers and sisters. A lot of people are seeing the serpents. We can see them now. They tried to disguise with many different ways. They use lenses like, a, what is it called? Like, uh, you know, when people have bad eyesight, they get those things that go over their eye, their eyeball. So they have made lenses for their eyeballs so that they can cover the slit eyes. And the mask thing, a lot of that is they're hiding their serpent tongue. Okay, because we're awake. We can see we're no longer sleeping. God has wake, woke us up, woken us up. And they're trying to deceive us the way that they did with Eve. Okay, this is very important, brothers, brothers and sisters in Christ. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Okay, so what woman is he after? He's after the woman, the, the, the um, body of Christ. He's also after the woman uh the 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 old i believe see he's accusing them day day and night right it says so the the old wineskin and the new wineskin so we're new creatures in christ now old things have passed away all things have become new it all the seed of woman i believe he is after but especially the woman which is israel which is um the chosen of god he had chosen to do works through just like noah was chosen and he built the ark he because why was he chosen because he would believe god god said i'm going to flood the earth and he believed but god said he would never flood the earth ever again so this serpent is trying to mock god by sending out a flood this is not the same kind of flood either this is different in the in the book of um uh Exodus, no, Genesis, the flood was the waters opened up in heaven, the, the underneath the waters came up from underneath, there was, there was a flood, the whole earth was flooded during Noah's, Noah's time. So the serpent cast out of his mouth, this is different, out of his mouth, water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So he's trying to carry them away with uh, uh, overwhelming them with too many words too much information and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth so she the earth opened up her mouth that's really important there's words coming out of the earth and this is this is something that the lord has shown us so whoever destroys the earth you know, there's a woman, which is a, like a nation or, you know, the people of God. And then there's the earth. You know, the earth is where we're at now as ambassadors. But we are part of that new Jerusalem. Uh, we are part of, um, and Jerusalem above, which is mother of us all, which are the holy angels and the city of our great king. It's a holy city. Um, it's not the one that they want you to worship the people of over in Jerusalem. Uh, he, Jerusalem above is mother of us all. That is a heavenly righteous place, is a heavenly Jerusalem. And the second tabernacle, I believe, was, was um, built to be like that so that you would understand. So the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So the dragon cast out of his mouth the flood would and these ones are the ones that, which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ so who are these people the remnant of the woman the um the woman i believe which is the nation of jerusalem since the remnant right the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So these have to be believers who are born again. Okay, so he's going after them to make war with them. With the, with the words that he's speaking. But he's also planning you know, war against them. And he, he has gone after the people of God. And um, he has clearly tried to overwhelm them. So you see the seed of the word of God in Genesis and in Revelation. You see over here. And um, let's see, where is that? Ooh, doo, doo, doo. Give me just a second here. 
the word of God. I believe is in this one, chapter 19. So right here you see, you know, um, there's a voice in heaven with much people. And here in verse in chapter 19 and here in uh, verse 11, I believe it is 19, 10, yeah, go to 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. So we're worshiping God. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we see that they have the testimony of Jesus. These, the, the one, the remnant of the woman have the testimony of Jesus. And that is a spirit of prophecy and prophecy is to edify the church brethren. So we worship God and this angel that gave the um, information to John the revelator about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, he wanted to worship him because he was beautiful probably, but he, th this angel said, don't worship me, worship God. So, um, and then I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. This is Jesus, the white horse. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So he's making war. And in the Psalms, it says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory will come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. So this is Jesus Christ that that Psalm was talking about. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Now he was the word of God, which was a lamp. Okay. And the five wise virgins have the light and in the book of revelation of jesus christ chapter one you see the lamps are the the uh, candlesticks are the churches the seven churches and on his head were many crowns so we are a royal kingdom of kings and priests different than the kings of the earth who get their seat and authority from satan right the dragon gives them their seat and authority it says that the devil satan gives them their seat and authority because they worship the beast Clearly, they don't worship God. Okay, we worship God <laughs> who made heaven and earth. Praise his name. Um, and a name written that, okay, so his eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Okay, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in white linen in linen white and clean and then we know that the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and we know that the holy angels messengers of god they are in white also and they have the spirit of god the holy spirit of god they have a sword whenever the angel was uh, appeared to um uh, people in the old testament uh, the warring angels had a sword and what's in our armor, the armor of God of a saint. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of salvation is the name of Jesus. The breastplate of righteousness is Jesus is righteous righteousness because apart from him, you could do nothing. You need to have Jesus's righteousness cover you. Even the um, Israel had to have God's righteousness and the, the, the prophets and, and David said, my righteousness is the Lord. It's his righteousness that I, that I am, you know, they, they claim the righteousness of God. And that's what we do. 